Hey guys, I'm Coach Michael Burt, the Super Coach. Welcome to another edition of one of my favorite shows, live from the Greatness Factory here in Tennessee. And today we're talking about a subject that's going to hit a lot of people, including the Super Coach. And that is the friction between wanting to grow, believing you are hardwired and, and created to multiply and expand and take dominion over your area and the ability to be content with what you have. How far do you go? How much do you push? How much do you sacrifice? When should you say enough is enough? We're going to tackle what many monster producers face out there in today's Super Coach Show in the friction between domination, growth, and contentment. Come on back to Super Coach. Hey guys, this is Coach Michael Burt. I am so glad you joined me for Super Coach. I believe a good coach can change your life. I believe a good coach will have conversations with you you don't want to have. Make you do some things you don't want to do. Help you become something you didn't think you could become. You see, you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. You can't reach your own potential without the help of another person helping you break through those ceilings of success. I'm Coach Michael Bird, and I'm going to find the kryptonite in your life, and I'm going to do it on this show, Super Coach. Hey guys, Coach Michael Bird, the Super Coach, every week coming into your life to multiply your life and your money and your business and what does a good coach really do in life? I think a good coach accelerates. I think a good coach brings focus and a clarity. I think a good coach adds accountability structures to your life. You can download Super Coach every week on iTunes, Stitcher Republic, uh, Podcast Republic, Stitcher Radio, Google Play. And here's what I want you to do. Give me some reviews, man. If you enjoy the show, and I'm listening to people out there. I had sales calls today with people who... Uh, who, who basically said, man, I listen to your podcast every single week. Thank you for that on, on iTunes. I want to say hi to all the people out there. Leslie Denny, David Ross, Jamie Stillman, John Brubaker, the coach, Scott Abernathy, Ivan Velasquez, Eric Hensley, Katrina Wadrup, Jennifer, Jennifer, uh, uh, Jeremy Wagner. That's who I'm saying, not, Je not Jennifer. David Ross, smartest landlord in the world, Dr. Scott Abernathy. Guys, thank you so much. I think everybody's going to enjoy this show today on the difference between growth, domination, and contentment. I see this a lot with monster producers. I face it a lot myself. And really, this topic came to me this past week when I was on supposedly on vacation in Florida uh, with my wife. It was just she and I. We didn't have our daughter with us. We were at our condo. It was beautiful down there looking at the ocean. And, uh, man, I just... I just was kind of raring to go, man. I, I and, and here's what I thought: when I'm when I'm off, I feel like I need to be working because I'm missing something. When I'm working, I feel like I need time off. When I'm not present in my business, I feel like something is being missed, and I need to get involved. When I'm with my family, I don't want to offer them crumbs or leftovers. And so, what I wrote down on there is, uh, what I wrote down on there was like, hey. How do we balance this concept of, of, of wanting growth in our life, of feeling like we were hardwired to really expand and multiply and take dominion with our need to be content and happy with what we have? Because I see it every single day. Do you want more or not? Are you interested in growth or not? Do you see potential in yourself or not? Are you pushing or not? And I meet all types of people who say to me, how much is enough, coach? What, what do we have to get? What do we have to have to be satisfied? And so I always, when I got questions, I turned to the good book. And so here's some statements I wrote down. This was a very popular blog I wrote on my LinkedIn page, on my Facebook page. And, and here's exactly how I wrote it. I said, I believe we were made to, to expand and multiply. I believe we were created to take dominion over our area and to use our gifting and talents to grow in abundance. I also believe in sometimes being content with what you have. You say, well, how can you believe those two things? You see, these two things produce a growing frustration in many people that I coach and even in me. I'm sure you're listening to the call today thinking this. Like I said, when I'm off, I feel like I ought to be working. The whole time I was in Florida with my wife, my mind was just running around like crazy with ideas. So when I get to a place I can relax and my mind is free, I have a flood of creativity and ideas, okay? When I'm in the heat of the battle, my mind shuts down sometimes, and I don't have all of those ideas. So what happens is when I'm off, I feel like I should be working. When I'm working, I feel like I need a little time off. When I'm with my family, sometimes I'm not present. When I'm not away from my business, I feel like my business could be suffering. And so for you, as I've been reading through the book of Ecclesiastes, 
and really trying to reconcile my personal thoughts about work, contribution, building a brand name, and money. Many people just stay confused about these Things. Now, you're going to hear work-life balance. You know me. I do not believe in work-life balance. I don't believe anybody who achieved anything great in the world, who really went out there and took dominion, has a healthy balance. They may have work-life integration, where they see their work as their mission, where they all parts of their life feed all parts of their life, very seldom have work-life balance. But if you own your own business, or even if you're in the pursuit of what you believe your calling could be, uh, you see your work as your mission. You see it as your calling in life. You, you know, and I think sometimes we've got this confused because we believe only pastors have been called. I think, uh, you know, you take Truett Cathy, Truett Cathy of uh, Chick-fil-A. He believes that chicken is his dominion. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine praying and saying, God, tell me what my calling is, and you get a picture of a chicken, and you start with one little uh, chicken business that turns into a multi-billion dollar business? So he believes chicken is his dominion. What is your dominion to take advantage of? So I see people that disengage, that crave time off. Let's take people that retire. I see people disengage only to see their everything crumble. Their mind disintegrates. Their health disintegrates. Their everything disintegrates because they're disengaged with their calling. I even see people who work their whole lives uh, to retire only to immediately fall into an entropic state. So I want you to think of this growth. I wake up and there's certain hardwired in me I want to dominate, man. And when you look at motivators of people, their mastery is a motivator for people. I'm looking at different people on here, like uh, Ronnie Martin, my banker on here, Matt Monero on here, Belinda Arinder, Tom Farrell, uh, Jose. You, you have this gene in you, many of you that I just named off. You have this gene in you that says, I wake up to dominate. And you can't dominate it if it's between the hours of seven and two. 45-minute lunch. Your mind is working. It's constantly thinking. You are constantly on a, on a concept of where you're trying to grow and get better. But, but part of you says, man, I, I need to refuel my engine. I need to rejuvenate. So I want you to think dynamic and growing, static and plateaued, entropic. Yesterday, I spoke to 160 insurance agents, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of them are at a static state. They've plateaued. And I'm looking around the room, and I'm like, are you interested in your potential or not? Today, I'm working with bankers in Nashville. I'm enjoying the people that were in the room because guess what? They were all interested in growing. They were all interested in moving and growing. So for you, if you're out there and you got this friction between these two things, I think that's okay. Frustration is a motivator. It's just misguided enthusiasm. And I did a call with the group in Minnesota just a few minutes ago, and I said this you got every right in the world to be frustrated if you're not making any progress. you got every reason in the world to be frustrated if you're not making progress. But if you are making progress and you are motivated by mastery, you're going to keep going and pushing. At what point does it become unhealthy? Does it become unhealthy that, that you're winning in one area of your life, but you're really failing in other areas of your life? Covey used to say success in one role doesn't justify failure in another. So are you pushing in every area of your life? Let me give you some kryptonite right now to get you out of this segment. And I come back, I'm getting into some more things about wealth, about possession, about brand, about heart, about honor. Here's your first kryptonite, okay? You've allowed yourself to stagnate because you won't challenge yourself, okay? What, and what you're doing is you're going through the same routines every single day every single day you're bored you're stuck you cannot get to the next level because you've reached a static state you're not growing in dynamic we come back in segment number two we're talking the friction between growth domination and contentment hey guys coach michael bird and i get asked all of the time what does a good coach do See, a good coach should engage you in a set of systematic behaviors that allows you to do something tomorrow you can't do today. They should find and fill your missing structures. They help you break through that ceiling of success that you can't break through on your own. And that, my friend, is why everybody needs a good coach in life. Check out Coach Michael Burt's Total Growth Academy at CoachBurt.com.
Hey guys, Coach Michael Burt, the Super Coach, coming back to you live. Come on, Facebook. Come on, man. We're trying to do a live show here, cutting me off. I'm Coach Michael Burt, the Super Coach, every week multiplying life, money, and business. Today we're talking the, the, the friction between growth, domination, and contentment. So I would ask you guys this question. At the end of the day, and I, if I were to ask you this question, is it okay to be content? Should, should you be content? Okay? Should you be okay with where you are? Should you wake up every day and want more and more and more? What if I told you more doesn't mean always mean more money? Sometimes more time, more freedom, more energy, more circulation. Okay? What is it that you want more of? Because there is a friction between I want more and I need to, I need to relax. I want more. I need to be content. Some people get content, though, when they have just a little. So when is it okay for you to go from a place of contentment to a place of complacency? A gradual settling to a place of mediocrity. Does that sound attractive to anybody? If you listen to this show on iTunes, does it sound attractive to gradually settle to a place of mediocrity? So I go back to one, one of my beliefs. I believe we're made to expand and multiply. I believe we were created to take dominion over our area, to use our gifting and talents to grow in abundance. Now, here's what's interesting. As I go to the book of Ecclesiastes, I'm reading, I'm reading the book of Ecclesiastes, and here's what I'm saying. God gives some people wealth, some people possessions, and some people honor, so they lack nothing that their heart desires. But God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them. Rather, strangers enjoy them instead. How many people do you know that have wealth, honor, possession, they lack nothing, but they can't enjoy it? Other people enjoy it. Other people are like, man, if I just had the life you have, if I just, if I just had the experiences you have, if I, just, if I just got to do what you did, right, then I would enjoy it. Okay? So for you, that, 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 that verse really struck me. God gives some people wealth and possession and honor. They lack nothing. Nothing their heart desires. They have everything they want. But God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them. Strangers enjoy them anyway. Now, what if you said this? My talents are used to help other people. My talents solve other people's problems. And I get joy. I get passion. I get energy from using my talent to solve their problem. So this describes many of the people I coach. They have wealth. They have possession. They have honor. They got brand names, baby. So, so let's just keep going through the Ecclesiastes. It says here, a good name is better than fine perfume. These people have built good names. We have built good names, right? So how do we reconcile this strong desire hardwired by God in us with our ability to enjoy what we have? You see, the frustration that many people feel can be a good thing. The frustration you have can drive your action. It was frustration in me that led to me to recommit my faith. It was frustration in me or divine discontent that led me to start my own business. It was frustration in me that led to the hours on top of hours along with other people, right, that led to building a championship program. Frustration can be the catalyst for getting off the fence and taking action. So for you, the problem not, could not be that you're not in, incredibly successful. It could be that you do domination and contentment. But it's the way you see what it is you're looking at that is creating the greatest problem. And that could be the problem. The way you see the problem could be the problem. The way you see the problem could be the problem. Now, I'm going to give you some kryptonite to get you out of this segment. And then I'm going to come back and talk about how to view success. Because I remember riding home one day. And I was going into my private subdivisions and the gate opens up and I was on the phone with my good friend Tommy Davidson. I said, one of these days, I'm going to make it, man. One of these days. And he said to me, who said you haven't already made it? Who said, what makes you think you haven't made it, man? Here's your kryptonite. Your obsession with one area of your life, but not all areas of your life, could be causing stress in another area. Success in one role could create failure in another. I want it all. I want the cake and to eat it too. I want to be obsessed with faith and family and business and friends. Is that possible? It is if it starts right here. You're watching Super Coach, and I'm Coach Michael Burke.
Hey guys, Coach Michael Burt. Here's a question for you. Why do you need a coach? So many people don't understand why they need a coach. Well, let me ask you this question. Have you hit a ceiling in your life? You see, we're either dynamic and growing, we are plateaued and static, or we are entropic, which means we're dying. A good coach will come along at that ceiling of success and help you bust through that ceiling. New insight, new strategy, new energy. And here's the real deal. They'll hold you accountable to the good intention you have that you've been falling off the wagon. If you need a good coach, go to Coach Michael Burt's Total Growth Academy at CoachBurt.com. Sign up today. Hey guys, welcome back, Super Coach. Sorry for the problems, man. We're gonna blame that on the internet. We're trying to get some pump out some greatness today, but I will tell you this. We're talking growth, domination, contentment. This is a struggle that everybody fights. If you missed what I was talking about there in the last segment, did they miss that or did they get that? Did they get the segment on Ecclesiastes, a little bit of it? I want to show you something I got going on right now that, I, man, you, you, you got to take advantage of this, man. If you're serious about growing, you got to take advantage of the book offer that I'm offering at coachbert.com backslash new book. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody create enough as much value as I am to get people to pre-order this book. When you pre-order my new book, Everybody Needs a Coach in Life, you get six months of online monster producer coaching. It starts tomorrow, December 2nd. You get uh, five hours of me reading the book to you, right? You get a 66-page PDF overview of the book. You get seven webinars, me interacting with you in the book. You get 15 days of being in my Total Growth Academy. I don't know what else can I give you, man. Can I give you the Sprinter? You want me to give you the Greatness Factory? This this should be enough value for you to go in there. And I want to thank all the people that have ordered. We've had a lot of orders over the last two days. Basically, go to coachbert.com backslash coachbert.com backslash uh, new book, and you get all of that for $29.99, man. You can't beat that. coachbert.com backslash $29.99. Hey, look, I'm watching my own self on the Internet here. want to say shout-out to everybody that's out there. Eric Hensley. Okay, Belinda Aaron. Yes, you did. Will Webb. Melanie Mayo, my mother. Thank you so much. Brad Elam, hope you can hear me now, brother. Okay, Will Webb, there's a lot better connection. Thank you very much. We went, uh, we changed sections here. So if you hadn't ordered the new book and got all that stuff for free, what you waiting on, man? Let me challenge you here. What what are you waiting on? What's keeping us from taking action with each other? Because that's a whole lot of value for $29.99. Now, let's get back to the title of the show, The Friction Between Growth, Domination, and Contentment. I don't know how much you guys heard out of great second segment on what it says in the book of Ecclesiastes. I want to remind you of that. 6-2 Ecclesiastes, God gave some people wealth, possession, and honor. Here's the trick, man. Here's the trick. So they lack nothing for their heart's desire, but God does not grant them the ability to enjoy it. So have you ever known a person that's completely successful, but they can't enjoy it? Other people enjoy it. You know, other people enjoy what they've done. And so for you, there, there comes a point when you say, I want to just enjoy. I am kicking people's butts. I do want to dominate. I do want growth. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy the ride along the way because the most frustrated people I coach, including myself, are the most successful. You know, it's a story of me riding home at the end of the day t- telling my buddy Tommy Davidson, good time Tommy, man, one of these days I'm going to make it, man. And he said, who said you hadn't already made it, coach? (laughs) Because a lot of people think you have made it. So for you, could the problem, and this is what I want to tackle in this last segment, and I want to say hi to Jamie Stillman. Thank you for buying the books. Clayton Tank Whitaker, what's up, big guy? Nancy Thompson, good to see you. Good to see everybody. You know, I think everybody who's on this right now are all high achievers. These are all monster producer people. There's a seed in you that is planted deep Deep, man, deep and dominated, man. You you are not satisfied, right? So could the problem be how we look at success? Now, I had a coach named Dan Sullivan once in the strategic coach, and here's what he used to tell us. Everybody in the class was making between hundred and five hundred thousand dollars a year. Then you went five hundred and above, a million and above. Everybody's successful from a monetary standpoint. And uh, he used to say this: the way you're looking at success is all wrong. Because you're constantly measuring where you are versus where you think you should be. And look, look at how the goalposts move. 
You get to where you think you want to be, and then guess what happens? You raise the goalpost, right? It ain't enough, right? So if you do a million in sales, you say, well, we should have two million. You get to two million, well, we could get to 10 million. We get 10 million. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because that friction pushes you, but it keeps you in a state of constant frustration. It's like you're just pissed off all the time. You can never say, damn, it, man, we are doing unbelievable. I'm not satisfied. I think we can do more. We all can do more. But, but, right now, man, I'm good with where we're at. I'm, I'm actually pleased. We're making progress. We ain't where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. So how did he teach us how to measure success? He always taught us to look back. Look back to the past. And he used to say to me, now, where, where were you seven years ago? Oh, oh, yeah, you were a high school basketball coach. Remember that? When you were coaching your little 30 players and you had your little team at your high school, remember that? He said, now, what have you done since then, coach? And he'd say, well, how many books have you written and how much have you done and how has your business grown 10 times and have you done this? And I'd be like, yes, 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 yes. And they'd look at me and say, well, why are you so pissed off, coach? Why are you mad all the time, man? Because there's this hunger and there's this desire for more. And so as I was reading that in Ecclesiastes, God gives some people wealth, possession, honor. They lack nothing, but he don't give them the ability to enjoy it. Other people enjoy it. And I'm thinking about all the people I coach, and I'm like, man, that guy's always pissed off. And that person's always unhappy. And that person, right? And that's part of what makes them great. They wake up with a chip on their shoulder. They want to dominate. And so here's what I want to kind of leave you with today to get you thinking about. What if we measure progress versus perfection? I, I, I like what Matt Monero's doing out there in, uh, out, out in Texas where, he, where he's torching his business. Let me tell you something. I'm about to torch his business too because there's things we walk in every day. Brandon would agree with this, that we say, man, we're, we're good, but we could be so much better in this area. This could be better and that could be better. There's things I'm going to torch in my business. That is inspiring to me. People that get up and want to grow and push and drive. That is inspiring to me. The Carrie Ann Sears of the world, okay? The, the, the people that are out there pushing so hard, that's inspiring to me because I want to reach up. But at some point, I got to say, look, man, I'm going as hard as I can push. We're, we're pushing as hard as we're making progress. It ain't perfect. I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. So what I've tried to measure in my life, when I get really frustrated, one of my tricks is this, guys. And it'll take much to frustrate me. One bad phone call can frustrate me. One walking through the greatness factory and, and, and something being on the floor can frustrate me. I, I look constantly for perfection. I am a perfectionist. But what I've tried to train myself to do is say this, we are making progress toward a dominant focus. Yesterday I lost a sales deal and I was mad at myself because I wasn't prepared to be on the call. I didn't give my explanation of services, what I teach everybody else to do. And I knew it was pitiful. I knew it. And yeah, I didn't get it, which cost us money. And so I said, man, I just beat myself up all night. That's the very first thing I thought about when I woke up this morning. And I'm like, man, I'm better than this, right? I'm not interested in being content. I'm, I'm sure as heck not interested in being complacent. Why? Because of my belief. I believe we were, we were made to expand and multiply take dominion. The Old Testament, that meant have babies. Okay, I can't imagine. Who, who was it? Solomon had 2,000 wives? Come on, man. What was you thinking? The only thing worse than having 2,000 wives is 2,000 husbands. I mean, can you imagine? So, But here's the deal. In the New Testament, that means grow, expand, multiply, take dominion. Real estate agents, take dominion over your land. Mortgage people, take dominion. Okay, get out there and take, be a master of your craft. So what are motivators for people? Progress is a motivator. Autonomy is a motivator. Mastery is a motivator. Um, purpose is a motivator. These are things that motivate and keep people. So could it be you're living in a constant gap between where you are versus where you think you should be? So, so let me say this, because here's going to be all the people that say, be content with what you have, coach. Be content with what you have. Timothy 6, 6, 8. Now there is great gain in godliness with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world. Remember when you came into the world? A little naked baby. Somebody had to smack you <laughs> right on the booty to kind of get you woke up. You came into the world with nothing, man. Nothing, zero, nothing. Except desire, hunger, passion. I think we're all born geniuses until we become degeniusized by the world. Somebody tell us, no, you can't do it. No, you're not good enough. No, you're not smart enough. 
But 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 you came into the world with nothing, and we can take nothing out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, will these with these we will be content. That's in Timothy. So here's the argument. You're gonna hear both sides of this equation. You were made to expand and multiply. You also need to be content because many times you got a lot more than a lot of other people have. You got a lot more than other people. So so let me close it with this concept. Should you be obsessed with your own potential? Absolutely. 150%, if there's even 150%. I believe uh, it just sickens me every day to coach people, and I'm trying to beg them to get interested in their own potential, and they're not interested. It makes me sick, man. Okay, so should you be obsessed with your potential? Yes. Should you be content with what you have? Yeah, man. You, you should say, hey, I ain't, there's other people got a little bit more than me, but that's okay because I got a lot more than a lot of other people do. Should you measure progress versus perfection? Yes. Can you be both? Absolutely. Is you can want to dominate and say, man, we're doing pretty darn good as it is. To each his own uh, in the struggle for contentment versus expansion. Some people want more. Some people want it all, man. You got to make up your mind what it is you want. Now, let me close with this. Here's what I want. I want to sell a minimum of 10,000 copies of Everybody Needs a Coach in Life. And you know why? I got conviction about my book. I got conviction that it can help you. And if you never sign up for a coaching program and, and if you never come see me in person for $29.99, this book can become your coach. And when you pre-order the book, you get six months of coaching for free online, Monster Producer. You get a 66-page ebook. You get an audio book. You get, I don't even know. I mean, we get access to my online academy. What else do you get? What else do we give them, Brandon? You want to throw in my house, man? Did you give them a house too? Did you give them the Sprinter? Okay, but because I've put together such an offer that I think it'll change, to be honest with you, the way books are released forever. It's a pre release order. The book comes out March 21st. We got people I saw today ordering five, six, seven copies on Amazon. Thank you to Brent Dyer for that. If you want to order bulk copies for you, we'll, we'll get the book for you, man. But in the interim, the minute you buy it, you get access to all this stuff. We got, what, 20, 40-something people going to be a monster producer live tomorrow because they bought the book yesterday, and they get that. So listen, I got conviction. I want growth. I want expansion. I want mastery. I want to go dominate my space. But there's a lot of times when I looked in my little girl's eyes last night, I laid down and just sat across my baby girl, and I looked in her eyes, and I just saw this pure potential. And it was just one of those moments that I said, man, thank God. Thank God for the blessings of talent and thank God for letting us take dominion and thank God for this little girl because I just see so much potential in her. So I want you to go out there and crush it, man, and that's what a good coach will help you do. Let me get you out here with some kryptonite, guys. Here's your kryptonite. You want to grow and expand, but you don't know how. Therefore, you've settled. Think, think of when a house settles. Think about when something settles to a gradual place of mediocrity. That's what the word settling means, by the way. It is a gradual settling to a place of mediocrity. Complacency is one of the greatest emotional cancers in the United States. 67% of people say they're disengaged with their work. Right, Tammy Lane Coleman, Adam Wright, Ronnie Brawler, Will Webb, Diane Michael, Higgins. Okay, hey, 67% of people get up and go to something they're disengaged with. So you want to grow and expand, but you don't know how. You know what you've done? You settled. For, for living at a, on a street you don't want to live on, working at a job you don't want to live in, being in a relationship you don't want to be in, driving the car you don't want to drive, you settle, man. And I'm here as a coach. I can't let you do it. I can't sleep at night with good conscience by letting you sleep. Now, I've showed you what the Bible says about wanting more and growth and what it says about being content. I think you can have both at the same time. I think that's what it's telling us. I'm Michael Burt, the Super Coach. I believe everybody needs a good coach in life. Thank you for letting me preach to you today, man. You can download this on Supercoach on iTunes. Come see me at the Greatness Factory. we got to get people in the doors, man. Tomorrow i got Monster Producer uh, live. I'm teaching it next week in Cool Springs as well. Then we're bringing it to Nashville in 2017. Everybody needs a good coach in life. Thank you. And God bless you for letting me be yours. Hey guys, Coach Michael Burt, how do you find the right coach for you? There's personal coaches, there's life coaches, there's business coaches, there's spiritual coaches. Here's the deal, you gotta find a coach you have an affinity with. You believe the same things. I believe trained people always outperform untrained people. I believe coach people always outperform uncoached people. You gotta find a coach that you think brings the knowledge and the skill and the desire and the confidence 
to you that will work for you. I would love to be that coach through my new Total Growth Academy. Go to CoachBurton.com, click on Virtual Coaching, and get coached by me every day on any device, anywhere on planet Earth.